Dr. Thomas Manton IV, I'm continuing on the high calling. Get ready to be blessed and empowered like never before. I have to say this right now. The Lord has been talking to me the last few minutes. He said, he said uh, tell the people again, the high calling will cost you everything, but it will also give you everything and more. You know, if you gave up everything for Jesus, and he just gave you back the little that you gave up. Like Peter, yeah, uh, uh, fishing nets and boats and some fish and some few people. Then, you know, God just gave it back to him. Here's the boat, Peter. I give it back to you. You, know. you wouldn't be too excited. But when the, when the Lord said in Mark, 11, uh, Mark 10, 28 to 30, Peter, I'll give you. And the church, this is a word to the back to the disciple Peter, but... The whole church will get it. Everything you gave, I'll give back to you. A hundredfold. Houses and mothers and sisters and lands and people and resources and open doors and favor and pleasures and everything. And he said, and, and with it, eternal life. <laughs> and you can't beat that. Nobody has that program. Nobody has that benefit package. Only Jesus. So was it worth it for Peter? I'd say 2,000 years later. Well, maybe a little more because if AD 1 was the year of the birth of Christ, he went 33 years, so that would be 203, that would be, that would be 033. Three. Ha ha! Now we're 2022, so minus 10, you get it? And then Peter went another, but around the time he was doing that, you'd say, hey, you know, 2,000 plus years ago, Peter would say now it was worth it. Could you imagine being in the glory already for 2,000 years? Did you imagine the devastation of being in hell already for hundreds or thousands of years? I mean, thousands of years, like the old false prophets that died, you know, centuries ago. Uh, it's not good for them now. So what do you want to do? You want to give your life to please God? It's worth it. But it's going to cost you in the now. Let me tell you something. I found some scriptures in Peter. This is the High Calling, volume three or four, wherever I'm at now. I found some scriptures in Peter says, one says, rejected of men, chosen of God. Look at David. A reference to that is David was not invited to the anointing service when Saul was, uh, Samuel was sent to the, the house of Jesse to anoint the next king. He went through all six sons and didn't find the, the anointed. And he had to ask Jesse, do you have another son? And Jesse said, oh no, it couldn't be David. So they were like, well, the prophet said, um, he hasn't seen the one that he came to see, so... Let's see if it's David. Go call him. Call, call David. You know, we'll wait for him to come. He might have been far out in the field. Maybe someone had to go and find him. You know? Fetch him out of the, whatever he was doing. He, he was doing his things, even practicing his music, his warriorship, killing animals, you know, the lion and the bear, working on his psalmist ministry all out there by himself. A lot, a lot of people know of the King David, the glorious King David, but they don't think about that. You might know of Joseph, the prime minister, and the one who had the coat of many colors in the beginning and was the favorite of the Lord, and, and, and everybody prospered, and Joseph prospered, and everybody around him prospered because the Lord was with him, even Potiphar's house. And then and all these people that benefited from him, but yet they threw him away. His brothers wanted to kill him. Well, a lot of people remember that story. But then Joseph was promoted from the pit to the palace in a day. He became the prime minister. He became the number two in the land under the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh said in Genesis, uh, the story of Joseph, Joseph is in Genesis 39, 40 and 41. And he said, the king said, the Pharaoh king, whoever he was, he said, no one is anointed like Joseph. I need him call for him, bring him, because no one has the spirit of God like this man. 
So your quest is what? To be more full of the anointing. I can never regret too much anything that I've gone through because I'm yet anointed and will, will ever be the privilege of that. But if you want to really walk in great kingdom destiny, you're going you're gonna to go through some stuff. And men will even revile you. Men will even be jealous of you. People will hate you for, this, for the, the name of the one who you're serving. Jesus said, they hated me, they'll hate you. So, uh, don't worry about it. Now, here's a powerful, here's a powerful action verse. 2 Peter 1.10, again in the book of Peter. If you make your calling and election sure, you'll never stumble and fall. You'll always continue forward. You have to choose that. And here's something that I've seen, and I can tell a lot of details about this, but I won't. But I just mentioned the principle because it really needs to be spoken out to people. Uh, I, I'm not averse to sharing like, you know, this is and that's of this is here and there and what, uh, uh, real scenarios, situations, real happenings, but not necessary, but I have to allude, not necessary right now, but I have to, I have to allude to the point and make it. People will disappoint you. A lot of people are just after their own thing. Really, they act like they love you, but they don't. They love what you do for them, and they're really on their own quest. And maybe you're called to help somebody, to complete someone in a situation. That's a good thing. Let it happen. However, when the real test comes of a battle of the heart or a situation, they can let you down. If if you think they're holding you up, shocking. I'm not saying expect that because that's negative, that's faith in reverse. But don't be shocked when you see that happen. Joseph was great, people forgot him. <laughs> and then somebody remembered him one day, it was the boss. Butler and the baker forgot him. Oh, sorry. A couple of years, a few years went by. He was still there. Psalm 105, after the 15 verse, it says, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. The scripture says that Joseph's feet were hurt with fetters of iron, chains. Iron chains, iron shackles, whatever. Got into, cut his, cut his, into his ankles. Joseph... Maybe he didn't have a limp, but he surely had scars around his ankles from the damage done of the uh, iron bars that were on his feet. Could you imagine? And then people saw that and left him there? How cruel. Something just happened uh, th this week, okay, that was important to me, and somebody really dropped the ball. And then I was telling a, a, a government leader today that I was with, I had meetings all day, uh, I've just came out of them. I've had a very long, uh, intense day of meeting after meeting after meeting. A very, very lengthy one in the, in the middle of it all. And I said, if I were to neglect to fulfill something, I wouldn't be able to sleep that night. I can't do somebody like that. I don't know. I think God... I think God really notices your heart, uh, that he can really trust you when you have that kind of heart and you just want to do good for people and you can't do them wrong. The, the anointing will make you sensitive. The high calling, the glory of God in you will make you sensitive. It'll make you um, a little bit fragile, very sensitive. On, on uh, issues of dealing with people. You'll feel compassion for people. You'll be soft-hearted, very sensitive to also to dishonor and to see honor and know the value of it, to enjoy favor, but also to see the disdain and feel the sting of dishonor. You know, it, it, like the anointing makes you sensitive in every way. Are you ready to walk through that and handle that? Then after a while, of course, as God's done for me, He does for a lot. He does for His real servants. 
Uh, it makes us tough skinned, you know. Where no matter what you feel for a minute, you're gonna get through it. Even in your emotional realm, your mental realm, your thought realm, how you feel, and just get through it. Here's another thing, wherever you feel like rejected, overlooked, denied, uncared for, step out of that equation. Or if you're doing some business in a situation that's something you need to do, just do it, all right? Extract what you need from it. Be strong enough to still interact with things you need to interact with and people. If there's something that you need to be getting done. And then just know that you're not going to invest in their stock, so to speak. and be, be, be able to keep walking with God, trusting Him for the greater thing that's just about to happen. I want to talk about that in a minute. That's just about to happen in the most magnanimous ways rather than wallow in what you're feeling or seeing right now. Something is indicative. Now, I'm not the kind of person that says, well, it didn't happen, so it must not have been God's will. We don't say that with him. Some things was God's will, and people messed up the program. But it was supposed to happen. Well, well I guess it didn't work out. You know, whoa, whoa, whoa is you, whoever. I don't want to say me, because I can't say that to myself. That's a negative confession. Woe unto the whatever, because you're, it didn't happen, so it must have been God's will to go that way. What are these things that we chalk up to God's will when he says he always wants us to succeed? He always causes us to triumph. Come on, say amen. With the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Bless in the city, bless in the field, bless when we go in, bless when we go out. Bless when we come in, bless when we go out. All the fields and lands of the earth are ours. Joshua 1, 3. That's Deuteronomy 28. But Joshua 1, 3 says, wherever you put the sole of your feet, there I've given it to you. Joshua was fighting the battle, as I said again yesterday, uh, in the uh, message on the prophecies over the nations being fulfilled. Last night's message. I was talking about the presidential election in Kenya that we prophesied about, and it gloriously came to pass. Oh, my. I, I can't recap all that. Watch yesterday's message. It's called Prophecies Over the Nations Fulfilled. And that's the title, and that was done yesterday on... Tuesday, September 13th, 2022, which was William Samoy Ruto's inauguration day. As the Lord said, he would be the fifth president of Kenya. As God spoke to me even three years before, it happened, just as the Lord said so. Although many thought it wouldn't happen. And it was a vigorous fight, vicious fight. It was, it was, it was rough. But sure enough, the Lord's will came out. Then they tried to fight it in the Supreme Court and all of the Supreme Court justices, seven to zero, I believe it was, unanimously uh, voted against the petitions trying to nullify the election. And the result was uh, sanctioned to be accurate and valid. And the glorious inauguration with so many presidents from so many countries Pack Stadium. It was it was anointed. The touch of God was upon the whole thing. And the Lord even said to me last night, and I said this in the message on the prophecies over the nations fulfilled. Prophecies over the nations fulfilled. Yesterday's message. Tuesday, September 13th. The Lord had me say that the presidents that came are going back with something, that came to visit Kenya. There was one particular nation that was absent, the president didn't come. And I'm very, uh, I'm, not, I'm not amused that he didn't come, he should have come. I don't care what he was doing, he should have made his way there. And he's also in the East African region. Not the community, but a, a neighboring country that really needs a lot of help and development. And the Lord even gave me some words for that country. Now here's another thing, people always have excuses like, well, too busy, couldn't do it. No, the attitude of the heart. Now sometimes there's legitimately something going on that people can't fulfill something, you have to overlook that. And then also here's a key for your success in the spirit, in, in your covenant with God. When 
somebody does something really bad or they mess up your program in some way or don't fulfill something that they're really supposed to do, you have to forgive them. Let's say that right now. Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. No matter what. You have to forgive. Release them. Don't hold a grudge. Don't hold it to their charge. And then be strong enough that if there's something yet left to happen, you're still going to let it happen. I went to a certain hotel resort and this. Somebody acted very stupid there, a couple of guys, manager and some other buffoon. And we left there, and my driver, my friend was, a uh, pastor friend, who was driving, he really was annoyed and said, I'll never go back there. And I thought, no, nah, no, nah, that might have been a devil at the gate. There could be some treasure in there. I'll go back another time. I'm not going to be uh, ultimately offended because of a couple of fools. If there's something good there, I'm going to enjoy it. I'll kick the gate in and I'll get in. Not literally, but I mean, I'll get in and go in and see what's going on there and just ignore that. A lot of things you have to ignore. But if you want to walk in the high glory, know this, a lot of people are going to forget you. Many will try to dishonor you. Many will not care because they want their, they're after something for themselves. Uh, and then the quest to find the loyal team of people that are really like uh, in love with your mission and really have an affinity for what God's called you to do and the anointing that's upon your life. Um, to have them in your world is a very valuable thing. And also we need the operatives that are brilliant in the realms of administration and giftings and brilliance and all kinds of gifting and skills in the realm of business and production. From A to Z, from being anointed to, to activating things, acting, doing things, getting things done, you know, it's just like amazing. A to Z, all the way to Z, production, productivity, E for excellence, F for faith and uh, facilitation, you know. P for pro progression, positive attitude. And another one is uh, public relations. M for marketing. T for timing and time. R for redeeming the time. You know, it's just so amazing. The gifting that God's given to men and women, you have to find the right ones, can you say amen? But know this, when the devil tries to stack the deck, the hand against you, know that God has a greater thing for you. I'm not saying you gauge God's potential blessings. You saw a lot of people spiritualize things too much like that. Well, the enemy's really fighting. God must really have a blessing. But I want to tell you, that's also true. But you don't need to always look at it like that. Just say, that de you stupid devil, you stupid devil, and people that just mess up, try to mess up things, you, and, and others that want to kill you, that are enemies and opponents, wicked, disgusting people. Say, now nah, I'm going to fix all this. I'm going to put the pressure in the realm of spiritual warfare down upon all this. And uh, I'm not going to tolerate it. Not to say, well, you know, you, you gauge like the blessing that God wants to give based on the level of warfare. Although that is also true. God has so much in store for you to do for you, with you, through you, to you, through you, around you, about you, for you, and for the world, through you. But devil wants to stop it and trip it up. But he's a defeated foe. Can you say amen? And just know this. Somebody that uh, dropped the ball of something you were supposed to see happen, you're still going to get blessed anyway, but I think they missed an opportunity being blessed. And people are too often in, uh, preachers too, 
competitive and uh, petty and jealous and undermining. And, and, but something about jealousy, I have to say, people say, some people think everybody's jealous of them. About what? What is this? Get over it. Don't think you're the victim of the world. Some people don't even care. I think that's the worst problem, when people don't care. People that want to fight you, like they know your power, at least they're trying to engage you. That's not that it's good, because God will snuff them out. You, you want to swing at God, he'll swing back at you. But some people just don't care. Their indifference stinks to the high heavens. I have to say something like this too. Because of competition, jealousy, hatred, those, but also indifference and lack of care, lack of connection and switching on, a lot of things don't get done and the kingdom doesn't get advanced. But when you have people that are like powerful, uh, powerfully uh, operating in Combustive connection, the chemistry, like the mixing of those uh, chemical uh, components and causes a, a reaction that produces power, kinetic energy and manifested energy. Not just potential, but in manifestation. There's something to that. Oh. There's something great about that. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you've not called any person to walk alone. Here's another thing. Nobody can do the thing by themselves. I had a great man today. Shocking. I was a little bit shocked. You know, I didn't say anything. I just said thank you. But I was a little bit amazed. He said, some of these things you're talking about, you could delegate to me and I'll handle them what I can. He's just switched on. He's just connected. And this is a guy you never thought. He's a busy guy. He's a very high-level guy. He's an important person. In a very important arena, he's not a small, you know, player on the on the field, and yet he said, "I can do these things for you." I thought, "Yeah," and, all, and I'm right away. I jumped and said, "Yeah," and get people too that could do a lot of the legwork. Because, but he's willing, and he's helping me with so many things. Like some people that you get are skilled. Uh, they cut to the chase of things, and I got to tell you something. Some things are so complicated if you don't have the right help. I remember one time I, I did a big transaction, an international thing to import something somewhere. And the process of that was just hell on earth. There were so many details. It went on, it was so thick and complicated. But yet God raised up someone from the government to help me. And then another person, and they w sweated all the details. I thought, I could, not, I could not have had the grace to handle that all myself. Especially in a foreign land and you know, all, that, all these details. And the same thing in, in other things. You have to know people. God's favor will give you people. He'll give you people to help you on things you can't figure out. You don't have the energy, the grace, the time to figure them out. The Lord knows that. And, and that's, that's a marvel and a wonder. Sometimes when you feel like you're having the greatest challenge, the Lord will just send the people to just take care of so many things. You got to look around and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I could not have got this done without, without, without that. God does not expect everybody to carry the big burden of everything. You need help. We need help. Real, genuine, anointed, skilled, brilliant help. Some things people can do and the Lord will bless you. Bless people for doing it. You think, well, do I have to do that? Oh, heck no, you don't have to do nothing. Do I have to do anything? No, I don't have to do anything. But I have to obey God. So does everybody else. God gives an opportunity to say, let me take that burden. Let me fix that for you. Let me, yeah, I know this is important to you. I'll, I'll work on it. I'll get it done. And then we're just like, wow, Lord, I, 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 I couldn't have got that done myself. God uses people. Don't ever forget it. And embrace that. Love it. Thank God for it. I, I thank God right now today. So several things. So people help doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that. Things that, that I, I couldn't have gotten it done without their expertise. 
Someone said, is that a real fake confession? No, it's a real. I'm a, I'm a faith man and I'm a realist. In reality, like let's say you have something that's very complicated. It goes between several offices. And it's a real complicated thing to get done. A lot of details, a lot of interaction, a lot of offices, a lot of places. And, and, and you'd have to have that, and especially if you don't know the area, you don't know how it works. You know, if you're from another culture, another land, another nation, another place. If the people weren't there to do that, how would it get done? And also, God puts a lot on us to do the job that he's ordained us to do, individually. The, I'll give you a scripture for that. Acts chapter 6, the apostles were overworked. They lost Jesus. They had the upper room. They went through that, the persecution, the fear, the terror. Then Peter came out, anointed out of the upper room and preached. 3,000 people got saved and came in. Then the, the next, a couple, next day or a few, two or a few, uh, 5,000 more came. Now they got 8,000 people joined the church. 8,000 people in a, in a week's time. After the upper room, a week or you know, however many days it was. Sh very short span of time. Now you got 8,000 people looking at you. Let's have church. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Let's go, boys. They didn't have electric systems in their day, but they had the instruments and they could raise their voices however they did. A bank percussion instruments, you know, and do all that. But, um, and then they were working so hard. And I got said, wait a minute. I'm going to help you. Get men, we'll, we'll call them the diaconate, deacons. Acts chapter 6. Men, and they had qualifications to be met. They had to be wise, full of wisdom, full of the Holy Ghost, loyal, integritous, living correctly, holy living and all that, and really have integrity and also be skilled, you know, and, 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 and zealous in the spirit with a good attitude. They had to have all those qualifications. And then they said, get these men, you apostles, that I put my anointing upon to preach and to do miracles and to evangelize and to shepherd people and prophesy. Acts 13, prophets and teachers, Saul and Barnabas, and God separated prophets and teachers. Amen. Prophets and teachers and evangelists and the, the apostles and the teachers and the intercessors and the whole system that was made to advance what Jesus did and how the Holy Spirit came and poured out his glory upon the people. Now, could they also be like, you know, washing the dishes, preparing the food and serving it and counting things and try to figure out? No, you'd go crazy. You wake up in the morning, you have to do all that, but you're supposed to be in praying to bring the power of God that you received in the upper room. And also, the, the, the anointing, when Jesus breathed upon them, it said, receive the Holy Ghost. To take these men. Maybe there were some women, I imagine, too. Deaconesses, deacons, the diaconate, let them flow. Another time that happened was in... Uh, uh, Exodus 18 God told Moses you're getting stressed out you're doing too much Jethro had the wisdom and told him so he says let's let's get 70 elders and they're gonna judge all the matters and the things that all the small matters and whatever they really can't handle I'll uh, have you get involved and know about it but all these little issues you don't need to deal with the art of delegation is a master principle. I'm, I mean, I'm so there in the amount of little details that just, especially after being disappointed by so many situations and people in their foolishness and carnality and corruption and lying, thievery, uh, lack of integrity, and then even people that have integrity that sometimes not the sharpest knife in the drawer, so to speak, in all kinds of matters. And you gotta like deal with that, figure it out, and know everything. There's this statement that's gone on in the success world, like a success, success teaching, even in the secular arena. So if you're the guru in your group, you're, 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 your group isn't correct. You need to have brilliant people in your group. You need to also embrace intelligent people, high level people that can think. They can cut through something and you go, woo, 
Woo, you're brilliant. Oh, my, 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 my. I, I could have figured that out, but you did, and quick. Thank you. The time saver. Well, I could shout happy and I could feel real irritated, both in the same flow of emotion, thinking about all of that. Getting things done is the key to life. I have an evangelist friend, he was teaching on uh, God first, put God first in all things. I do that. You know, they're teaching like families first and then God and then what, what? God gave you the family, but he gave you his calling. And you have to believe God for everything. You have to stay faithful to his call. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. This man had a great trial. His wife got very ill, very bad, very bad. She was bleeding. She lost half her blood, 40% of her blood nearly, hemorrhaging. And uh, he, had, he had it preached three times on a Sunday. So he called her sister to come and get her. And a lot of people would maybe want to have a bad feeling about this, but he said, God, me holding her hand is not going to heal her. Only you can heal her. I put you first. You called me. We made the covenant together. This guy said, him and his wife, she said her, she feels like that too. God is first before everything else. We're going to be faithful to God. Do you understand that? And the, the wife of the guy said, yes, I feel the same way. She's also called as an evangelist and pastor. She's pastoring the church with him. And sure enough, this is many years later. She's perfectly well. God healed her. The ministry has skyrocketed and grown. But if he didn't go do the assignment of God and just stayed there, who knows what would have happened. And he was talking about, I really, I really love this message. Putting God, because I, I preach the same thing, and, and to hear it again was a bit of a confirmation. Um, putting God first in all things. It's staying active in the calling, the high calling. And just shrugging off everything that's wrong, everything that's bad, and trusting God by faith that he's going to work it all out. Say amen. Your family, your relatives, if you're married, your mate, or your spouse, your family members, your children, if you have children, they got to be in the hands of God. Some things only God's miracle power can fix for them. You as the mom or the dad or the sister or the brother or the aunt or the uncle or the grandma or the grandpa or the cousin or the, the sibling relative, you know, the brother says, you can't fix everything for the other person. But my God, there's a blessing. The Lord promised a blessing that if we serve him, we'll spend our days in prosperity. And our life will be filled with pleasures. Job 36, 11. Psalm 84, 11 says, He'll withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly before him. Isaiah 45, 11 talks about the benefits of walking with God, moving according to his power, even commanding the works of his hands. And he said, concerning my sons or what I'm going to be doing in the earth, I'll show you. That's someone that has their hand in the hand of God. That's someone that's anointed. That's filled with his power, filled with his presence, filled with his purpose. So never look at what man does to disappoint you, reject you, malign you, hate you, hurt, try to hurt you. Don't take it to heart. And then if you're in an environment where you feel dishonored and disrespected get up and move never stay where you're merely tolerated always go where you're celebrated some people are weird they look at you, you, you i'm not saying me now but they well, could be me or anybody oh maybe you <laughs> and they go and they start to get an attitude or they don't help or they don't care or they don't and you're like was I born on the earth to please you and your, how you feel about things? No, I'm here to serve God. And the more I serve God, the more power comes on my life. And then the miraculous begins to flow. And not only a few people, but multitudes get touched, healed, delivered, blessed, empowered, raised up, successful, broken through, delivered, healed, anointed, 
made brilliant, filled with wisdom, filled with glory. You know, when you're a prophet, it, like in the governmental office of the prophet as I am, the high calling, the very high calling. My highest calling is as the prophet unto the nations. That's my high call. Being a teacher, high call, but a little bit under the grace of the prophet. Plus a teacher is the last office in the fifth, the fifth uh, dimension. The second dimension is the prophet, first apostle, third evangelist, fourth pastor, and then fifth teacher. A pastor, the, pa the Greek word for pastor and teacher is the same Greek word in Ephesians 4.11. Because a pastor is always a teacher, but a teacher could be in the office of a teacher. A teacher can also be a prophet slash teacher. An evangelist slash teacher, I haven't seen it as much. Apostle also will always be apt to teach because they're blazing trails. They have a teaching grace, you know. So does a pastor always. The prophet should too. The evangelist should too. But this prophet teacher thing is really on me. But the high call is the prophetic office. Now, I've said that, I've said that to say this, to lay a little plateau to stand on, to give this word. The now president of Kenya, who was inaugurated yesterday so gloriously, William Samoy Ruto, now the fifth president of Kenya, officially as of yesterday, in this packed stadium with 80,000 people, or however many, and 20 plus, 25 presidents from countries all across Africa, the attention of the, the, the news around the world, what an amazing event. And the touch of God was upon that thing. I tell you, I was... I was amazed by what I was experiencing. The touch of God, I'm telling you, the touch of God was upon that day. And the man is brilliant. But guess what? Many years ago, when he was having a great trial, I'm talking 10 years ago. What's this, 22? 12, yeah. 10 years ago or so, whatever it was, the Lord gave me a prophecy for him. It said, the spirit of wisdom will come upon the man. William Samoy Ruto, who is now, the, as of yesterday, the new president of Kenya. Commander-in-chief. He's, he's walking in that. So someone can say, well, was he going to be wise anyway? I don't know, but God said in Amos 3, 7, surely the Lord God does nothing except he first reveal the secrets to his servant, the prophet. In the middle of 2019, three years ago, Three years ago from now, three years ago, uh, I, I was in my uh, beautiful house somewhere in another faraway land. And uh, I just decided to pray one day. I don't know how it came up. And I said, so Lord, who will be the next president of Kenya? This is three years ago, three years before the 2022 election. I don't know many people that are thinking about it in 2019 when you have 2020, 2021 to 2022, three full years, um, almost to the week because it was exactly about three years, August of uh, 2019 when the Lord spoke to me. And the election was going to be in August 2022. And when I asked the Lord, I didn't even know what the date was of the election. It wasn't in my mind. Was it August, August 9th? I didn't know anything about it. But I knew it was 2022, because that's the end of the five years for President Hiro Kenyatta in his second term. So there'll be a new president. I asked the Lord, so who will be the next president? Within two seconds, the Lord said, William Ruto. The Lord didn't call him Samoy. <laughs> Someone will chuckle over that. He didn't tell me his middle name. He said, William Ruto. R-U-T-O. William Ruto. Yesterday, it became official. He's now the president. Paratala. I feel the anointing. Oh, my God. And what a battle it was to get to that point. God saw also my sacrifice and tears and prayers and intercessions over the nation of Kenya. Are you kidding me? Is that a small thing? Hebrews 6.10, God said, I'm not unjust to forget your labor of love as you've ministered for me to the saints around the world and done so much for me. In the 2016 election in the U.S., the Lord told me to dethrone the opponent.
to the winner. And I prayed for the whole year, from 15 to 16. I fasted and prayed eight or nine months of the year. I suffered around the clock. My sleep patterns were messed up. I couldn't eat many days. Uh, my appetite was gone. Then it came back. Then it went. It was a roller coaster ride. And on the election day, when they're giving the results, it didn't pop till 2 o'clock in the morning. It was like a cliffhanger. First, she's ahead. Then he's ahead. 2016 presidential election in the, in the United States. You know who the two candidates were. And boom, Mr. Trump won. And that was the end of the other thing. How much can I say, Lord? This is dangerous, what I'm talking about. So in Kenya, might as well just say it. So in other countries, might as well just say it. The end of situations based on the will of God and the word of the Lord. So I don't want to go too much into the details of that, but to say that the, the, the responsibility and the weight of glory to carry this sword, this staff, this mantle of the office of the prophet is no joke. I'm not talking about prophets, you know. Come up, I'm going to tell you, yeah, there's a green curtain in your room, I see, with a couch over there. And here's the, it's the name, like, name, name. Uh-uh, is this somebody you know? Oh, and people start crying. And I thought, you're supposed to know all that. I remember one time, some guy, this is years ago, it's very funny, the guy starts crying. He said, Dude, he told me, the prophet, the prophet, told me, I was raised by my grandmother. And he's crying, boo-hoo, like a, like a baby crying, like a grown person crying like a baby. I thought, are you out of your mind? You didn't know that? You're supposed to know that. What does that information teach you? How does that stretch your faith? How does that empower you to do anything? People marvel like, like it's a circus act. You know, it's like an entertainment thing. Sometimes churches like that. Get someone with the word of knowledge that can stand up and tell details like that. Crowds will come and everybody will sit there gasping when the prophet tells details to people. Everything that they already knew. That's fine if the Holy Spirit is doing that. If it's Him doing it, I, this is my motto on these things that we look at happening in the church world. If it's the Holy Ghost, if He did it, He's the boss. Bravo. If not, it's a problem. If it's the wrong emphasis on things too much, based on gifting and not on empowering the people, problem. But this realm of carrying the rod of authority when you speak to governments and nations and elections and put new presidents and speak them, you, you, you think it's, a, it's not a light thing. And someone could think, well, it was going to happen anyway and you were predicting. Well, are you kidding me? Prove it. Prove that from the Bible belligerent religious people think that can have that opinion. Now I know a lot of people wouldn't even think that right now, some people listening to me, but that, that kind of stuff does go on. And the reason I say that, because my mind is telling me like from the other side how, how people can be so foolish when God said literally I give you creative authority and power to speak to things, not just by faith according to Mark eleven twenty three, which is powerful everyone should use that, but I'm talking about in the office of the prophet to procreatively declare under the creative anointing of the Spirit of God to speak something into existence. And it happens. Today I got people send me articles all the time. And you're, everybody's welcome to. Please, if you see something that looks like a fulfillment of something I prophesied, send me a WhatsApp. Send me the link. Messenger it to me if you're in the Facebook or send me a WhatsApp or email it to me. My email is ministry at thomasmanton.com. Very easy to remember. Ministry at thomasmanton.com if you, if you want to email me. Three today popped up. One about the roads. 
Another, the new government, the new governor uh, on the coast of Kenya is uh, instituting a lot of new development there. I prophesied that. I stood in front of the memorial, not the memorial, the, uh, the monument in, in Malindi where they, they, they landed there in like 15 something centuries ago, 16 something or 15 something. Maybe, I think it was 15 something. 1500s, the Spanish ships, and they built that white monument there. Some of you know the name, I can't remember the name, but I stood there, and I have, we have the photographs that stood there and prophesied, looking across the water to the coast from that little peninsula there where that monument is. If you know, if you know the place, you know what I'm talking about. And sure enough, the news came out later that that whole area, as I stood there, there was nothing. I began to prophesy. Now they're planning to develop that whole thing as a waterfront new city or town or whole thing. <sighs> Who knew? God. Who did he use to speak? Me. That's not a light thing. That's supernatural power to the utmost degree, I, I tell you. The high calling. But get past the little issues, those that disappoint you, those that neglect you, those that hate you, those that want to hurt you, those that deny you, those that forget about you, those who reject you, those who don't value your time or your spirit or your life. Or just keep moving. Keep moving. Because you'll, you'll encounter all of that. And the more anointed you are, the more you might. The anointing attracts blessing, but it, can also, it also attracts attack. <laughs> Again, I don't say that in a negative reverse confession kind of way. I don't even like saying it. I'm just telling uh, realistically. As a faith man and a realist also, uh, what goes on in the midst of this walk with God. When you're carrying the high calling, you know what did it say? Woe to the one who everybody loves. Everybody like honors and likes means you're not stirring up the kingdom of darkness. The Lord will... Uh, I don't want to dwell on the negative part of it, but you know, you just have to... You, know, you understand what I'm saying? You have to get past that. But let me, let me speak on the positive realm. When you're anointed, God will touch people to love you. Touch people to favor you. Touch people to honor you. Touch people to help you. Touch people to work with you and for you to get things done. And that's where we're at right now. We're on the realm of a realm of... El we're on the verge of a realm of elevation that we've never seen because things are about to transpire and happen. And I prophesy this to all of our good people and friends. I declare it over your life. We're about to see, as it's happening for me, we're, we're going to see the greatest outpouring, the greatest blessing, the greatest empowerment, the greatest enrichment and fulfillment of things God's promised that we've ever seen in our life. Always be keen, like sensitive to want to help and sow and connect and do anything you can. And I keep seeing this number in my phone, 822. Every time it's 822 a.m., 822 p.m., every, it seems like every day I see it and I screenshot it. Someone said, why? Somebody said, why do you do that? Because I want to look at the number. 111, 111 a.m., 111 p.m. 11 11 a.m. 11 11 p.m. 11 colon 11 is a number that has to deal with mega wealth and finance from scripture if you study it out. Uh, someone did a study on that. I don't know where I put that file, but I have I have it somewhere. A whole study about it, what 11 11 means. I thought, how come I keep seeing 11 11? How come I keep seeing all these ones? 111, a thousand times more, Deuteronomy 111. I want to bless you a thousand times more. I said, I know that, but then I keep seeing 11-11. And it has its root in major financial wealth, like treasures, like millions and billions kind of wealth. Serious wealth, not just money to use, but treasures. I see that number. But I keep seeing 822, and I thought, my mind goes right to the thing. Seed time and harvest, seed time and harvest. 822, Genesis 822, Genesis 822, Genesis 822. Seed, time, and harvest, seed, time, and harvest. And every time I click the thing and screenshot, I say, I, I want to sow another seed. I know I have to sow. 
When you sow, God will... I, I tell you, I've, I've, experienced it. I've experienced this all the time. When you sow, God will cause... You help somebody else, God will help you. It unlocks the door for God to help you and bless you. Can you say amen? When you're a giver, you become automatically a receiver. Now, how much you expect to receive, your expectation is how God really begins to urgently cause the flow to come to you because you're expecting by faith. You don't just say, well, I gave and okay. And you just pause there, freeze frame. You're like, looking at myself. You're like frozen, stuck like the wax uh, figure at Madame Tussauds in London. You know, they make the celebrities like look like people, but they're made out of wax. I have a friend that was in my meetings in London. It's a crazy policewoman. She's a policewoman. Can you believe it? And she's a bobby in the London police force. Crazy lady. I mean, in a good way, you know. And um, very amusing. She went to Madame Tussauds and she took all these pictures and she put her arm around the Queen. And you see a picture and you think she's literally with Queen Elizabeth, who's now passed away last week. And she's like this. And the Queen's here and she's here. And, and you think, how did she get to put her arm? Nobody could put their arm around the Queen like that. The guards would get you. That's out of the protocol. Let me tell you something. I don't care who you are, even if you know her and she knows you. I don't even think the family can do that. The royal queen, Queen Elizabeth II, you don't go up and grab her by the neck and go, hey, <laughs> like a friendly whatever, and you make her neck move like this and you're leaning on her. No, 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 no human, nobody. That's not allowed. That's not allowed. You can't do it. So I thought, how did she have a picture with the queen? I looked at it, I remember, oh, it's Madame Tussaud. It's a wax figure. And they have all the actors, all the celebrities, all the presidents, and even Prince Philip was there, the old Prince Philip. They might have had one of King Charles now. They might, he might be there. You could put your arm around him and stand there and take a photo. But it's not him, it's a wax, it's a wax statue. So when something's coming for you to work in, you don't want to be like this, the wax in the wax museum. Madame Tussauds, Tussauds, T-U-S-S-A-U-D-S. -S Madame with the E at the end in London. It's a famous place. When I, when I go to London again, I'm def I haven't been there yet. I'm definitely going to go. That's it. That's, if you're ever in London, go to Madame Tussauds and see how it is. Put your arm around some famous person and look like, they look realistic. It looks like the real person, but it's made out of wax. It's a brilliant artist that made that. They have the temperature a certain way that everything stays in. Don't freeze. Move and do something. God blesses action. He gives harvest to the seed sower. He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. When you sow, you'll reap. Blessing. So always, every day, be thinking about who you can empower and don't feel bad about it. Sometimes you help somebody and you feel like, oh. And then you want to help somebody else. You think you can and you go, what, should I? Yeah, you should. Don't ever stop the flow of giving for anybody for any reason. Don't ever get so disillusioned because people have disappointed you. Or you've been hurt by a situation or you feel... You know, in whatever realm. Keep working the principle. Watch this now. Not unto men, but unto God. Say, Lord, I'm doing this for you. Now, do for me. And, and let me help somebody here. I'm teaching this here. You need to expect and pull on the blessing of God by expectation. You must. Go to him in faith, but with expectation. It's not wrong even to command something. Isaiah 45, 11, I believe, I, don't, I can't look it up right now. I don't, my other phone, I don't have on. But uh, my phone has gone off. I've been in so many meetings today, my phone went off. I wanted to write some messages, but I will later when I charge the phone again. But 
I, I can't look the scripture up right now, but I, I think it's Isaiah 45, 11. Somebody help me with that. It's the one that says, concerning what I'm going to do with my sons, I'll show you things to come, what I'm about to do. And concerning the works of my hands, you can command me to act. God, you mean I can tell you what to do? Really? That's a scripture that says that. And also in uh, Malachi 3... 10 to 12. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, by ye tithing and offering. Tithes and offerings, the scripture said. Not just tithes. Tithes and offerings. He said, prove me now. Watch me. That I won't open. See that I won't. See that I'll open. Watch and see how, I'll, how I will open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out a blessing that there's not room enough to receive all that I'll do for you. And I'll rebuke the devil, the devourer, for your sake. And I'll make you a delightsome land for me. Oh. I'll protect you. I'll rebuke the devourer. I'll rebuke the devil. I'll bless you. I'll open the windows of heaven. I'll pour you out so much blessing that you don't have enough room to receive it. That is astounding. Four or five things from one act. Matching that, doctrinally, Jesus said in Luke 6.38, Give, one word, give, and it will be given to you. Shall be given to you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. Shall men, God will use men, give back into your bosom. Seven things from one. Seven blessings. The fact that he's using men. It shall be given to you. What is your it? Let's ask the question. This is a great question. What is your it? What do you want? Give and it will be given to you. What do you believe in God for? What do you need? What do you want? I know what I need. I know what I want. I speak about it every day. I pray every day. I prophesy every day. I declare every day. Some I do in the messages here, but a lot more I do privately. Praying, 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 declaring, coming under the hand of God, recording messages as, as the Lord gives me the utterance to see His power and His blessings. Fill me to overflowing and everything in my life that I need and want, I'll have an abundance. I will have an abundance. Claim that too. Claim that also for yourself. The high calling makes you rich, it makes you blessed, it makes you powerful, it makes you productive, it makes you fruitful, it makes you strong, it makes you fierce, it makes you aggressive, it makes you the overcomer, it makes you the victor, not the victim, it makes you the triumphant one, not the trashed one. People try to trash you, make you feel bad, look at you, like reject you, and you feel just get, move away from that kind of nonsense. Stay in the glory. Wherever you know God's moving, or whatever, in prayer, in worship, in company with people, or in situations, or what you focus on, or what you're doing. Make sure it's always at the highest, utmost level. Under the hand of God. And that will produce the path for you that you need to walk on. When your heart decides what it wants, the mind will devise the roadmap on how to get there. God is good like that. He'll give you brilliant ideas. When He, here's another thing, not just what you want. See, a lot of times we, we work as humans just wanting to get our needs fulfilled. What we want. What about what God wants? That's the high road now. I'm, I'm explaining it now. I don't know if anybody's ever taught you this before. It's coming by the Holy Ghost. This is powerful what I'm going to say right now. This kind of really sums it up. So what is this high calling? What is the high road? What does it mean? What, explain it. Give me the intel. Give me the details on it. I'm going to do it right now because the Holy Ghost just gave it to me right now. In this third or fourth volume, wherever I am. Not in one and two. But now, 
The high road, the high calling, is what God is desiring to have and what He wants you to be doing. Not just what you want or what I want, but what He wants. That's the high calling. And guess what? When you get into doing that, He'll bless you. You can't be walking, serving God and stay poor, stay broke, stay destitute, stay in struggle, stay in need. You'll lack no good thing. I declare right now, you'll never be broke a day in your life. The, any lack or pain or problem you suffered or, or lack of something will be the last one you ever had. If you choose to switch over and get into this thing, find out what God wants, be working on His things. And always be giving. Sowing, produce, producing, taking action. And don't let any trial or adversity or wrong people or whoever slow you down again. Not another moment in your life. Time is of the essence. We have to redeem the time. You have to press on, forward. The mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Put away former things. Embrace the new because I'm going to do a new thing, says the Lord. Shall it not now spring forth? And rivers will run even in the dry places. Isaiah 43, 18, 19, and 20. Isaiah 45, again, I'll give you treasures that you didn't know about. And I'll do this for you, says the Lord. And by this you'll know that I'm your God who calls you even by your own name. Now I believe you got to operate in the anointing, in the anointing to get it. And I'll prove it from verse 1. Cyrus, who was the anointed one, Isaiah 45, verse 1. Broke the gates open, the bars, the iron gates. Broke them open by the anointing, and then they, the treasures began to flow. They were there somewhere, and I could match that with uh, Genesis 13, uh, Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs 13, 22. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Laid up for. It's there, but how are you going to get it? By busting things loose in the Holy Ghost. And God begins to give you ideas, He begins to give you power, boldness, instructions, what to do, how to flow. He gives you help. He gives you other people to favor you and honor you in the midst of disfavor and dishonor from so many different scenarios. God gives you the ones that were really... And you, and you get busy and get to work. And never look, never look to cohabitate. I know one man, he said, he had a partner in his early years in business, but then he got out of the partnership. And he took the whole thing for himself. To have his own enterprise. He said, I couldn't work with him. At the time I could work with a partner, then I had to part company of that and then have my own enterprise and let it flow. It's like that. What you're going to build apostolically, kingdom-wise, entrepreneurially, Entrepreneur, wise, uh, production, operations, company, business, ministry. It has to have a life of its own under the hand of the leader. The Lord has been really talking to me more about that. And I just declare that God will give you the grace and power to do everything he wants you to do. Let me tell you something else. You could also be at a high level serving in an organization. I know men that are number two to the number one. They're the assistant, but yet they do so much. It's as if they had their own, but they're working under the apostle. They're working in a ministry, but they can also flourish and do so many things. God will also give them the same reward as if it was their own company, as if it was their own church, as if it was their own ministry. And how many people, everybody see, wants the limelight. They want their name you know, dot com. They want their name at the forefront. They want to be the famous one, the one in the limelight. Well, listen, it's not about what you want. It's about what God's ordained. When the Lord Jesus Christ stood in front of me, the high calling, and laid his hands on my head in an open vision, and said, my son Thomas, my dear son Thomas, I'm commissioning you and ordaining you 
as my prophet to the nations and you will go around the world. He said many more things than I have. And I am. And we'll continue to do so. That was a leadership role he gave me. Nobody can compete with it. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can destroy it, no matter what they try. Nobody can undermine it, infiltrate it. Nobody can have it. Seems everybody wants to be there. But you can't try to have something that's your own if God's not ordained it for you. And also you need to serve in another man's. Jesus even said, if you don't serve well in another man's, who would give you your own? Basically he's saying, not me. I did it coming up. I served. I worked with people. I worked in... I can't... I don't have time. One day I'll tell you. I think people will cry when I tell the depths. You don't know the servant that I am. And have been all these years. I did everything as an assist, as assistance in the early days before I went into ministry full time. You have no idea. And I never let anybody pay me for it. Thank God, because God gave me the harvest. Thank God nobody paid me. I never had a job working in the, in the service capacity in ministries or whatever. Never. Wouldn't let them pay me. Had no desire for it. Wouldn't accept it. When they gave me money, I gave it back. You don't know. Nobody knows. I had cars given to me, or I got them somehow, or bought them. They were bought for me. I gave them away. I didn't sell them. I think I sold about three or four vehicles out of 15 or more. The rest I gave away. Who knows that? No, you don't know that. And when I get a lot of vehicles, there's a reason. There's a prophecy that went forth. I wish I could find that woman of God. It was so many years ago, this lady, we were in a, a great meeting I had, and there was a group of leaders, and one of the women prophesied, saw a vision, and told me about vehicles. That's all I'll say. And I, all these years, I had it in the back of my mind, thinking one day, I remember that prophecy. Many others have talked about private aircraft, and... Massive amounts of treasures and things, yeah. And the Lord has spoken that same to me himself. So we won't be surprised to see full manifestations of it. And it's coming forth in Jesus' name. You've got, you have to have this hard attitude that, Lord, I'll do anything you want me to do. And stick with it. Keep giving. Keep sowing. Keep working. Keep strong. Never be wounded or hurt by anything or anyone. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going strong. That's the high calling. So into this grace. The ways to do it are in the information in the title. If you want to co communicate with me and something bigger you want to do it is some transaction you feel the Holy Spirit's telling you to do. Contact me and we'll talk. I'll tell you how to I'll give you the details on how to fulfill that. Keep going. Never look to the right or the left. Stay faithful to the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It, it'll pay off for you in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Be blessed, my friend. I'll talk to you later.